You guys hear me okay? All right, good evening. <laughs> Welcome to the last and final session of TechEd. I'm sure you guys are so happy to be here um, because you guys want to be here, right? Am I right? It's not because your flight was cancelled. <laughs> okay, so yeah, uh, we're in about two minutes, we're expecting a rush of people coming in um, after they've got their coffee. So, good evening again. Yes, you guys are Russian people? Okay, excellent. I shouldn't say the word I No, no, I know, no, no, right? no, okay. no, 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 no. So good evening again. My name is Raymond Chow. Um, I am the principal consultant for Infront Consulting Group, and I'm based out of Malaysia. Um, so I kind of handle the region. So in my day-to-day -day job, I consult, implement, and deploy um, System Center and Hyper-V, and consult around um, design, planning, and also like performance uh, uh, measurements around uh, virtualization platforms. Um, it was good. So we delivered the same session in New Orleans, in TechEd uh, uh, US. It's much nicer for me because in US uh, it was a 28-hour flight. Here it's 16 hours. And because I had five days to rest to, until I did the session today, so it's really good. Uh, and with me today is uh, Alec. Well, you want to quickly introduce? Sure. Good evening, everyone from me. Dobry vecher. Uh, I'm Alec King. I <laughs> The King. The king, if you like, yes, yes. thanks. <laughs> I own the management pack for VMware. It's a Veeam product. I wrote the first version of that back when it was still NWorks, before Veeam acquired NWorks, if you've heard that name. Um, and so I run the development team and the strategy, and I own that management pack for VMware product. Uh, although what I want to do today is not a sales pitch for that. If you visited our Veeam booth, I'm sure you would get an excellent sales pitch uh, for the management pack. Obviously, I do think it's definitely one of the best, if not the best, ways to manage and report and uh, analyze your VMware environment. But I want to bring today some high points and some, some bullets that tell you about the, the model of virtualization, the key metrics that you want to be watching, the, the concepts, if you like, around monitoring a virtualized environment where there are a lot of differences to the physical world. Uh, so I might use my management pack to illustrate some of those points, but uh, I want you to take those points away and you know, make your own informed decision about how you can manage a vSphere environment. Right, cool. Yeah, so that's a, a pretty important point that Alec brought up. So the objective or kind of the gist of the session today is um, not only taking a look at like Hyper-V platforms, but we wanted to do it like Hyper-V and VMware. Right, so how many of you guys here are running uh, Hyper-V as your virtualization platform? Awesome. And VMware? Well, this is the first time I've seen more Hyper-V hands than VMware. That's <laughs> excellent, man. All right. <laughs> OK. So, so from, a, from a perspective of monitoring, um, what do you guys, do you guys monitor your Hyper-V or VMware platforms today? Right? What do you guys use in Russia? SCOM? All right. Awesome. Uh, anyone else using SCOM? Excellent. Anyone else using something else other than SCOM? What, what are you guys using? Sorry? Veeam? OK. And you? Veeam as well? OK. There you go. All right. We don't have to talk anymore. Yeah. That's it. Thank you, guys, for the coming <laughs> session. Everyone to the bar. <laughs> OK. So what we wanted to share to you today was kind of some experience, a consulting experience. Uh, I deal with a lot of customers who has Hyper-V. And I talk to them a lot about how to monitor their Hyper-V environments. And Alec here, of course, uh, has a lot of experience on VMware. So I'm going to be talking more about Hyper-V, and he's going to contribute as well on the VMware portion. And we wanted to take a look at a lot of the metrics and kind of start from scratch. What do we actually monitor on these virtualization platforms? And what kind of tools and how do we use the tools to better uh, consolidate those metrics into something useful that we can see. Okay? So, and I'm going to tell you that a lot of the times, um, there are a lot of tools out there, but do we really need them? Because I know of a lot of companies, and I've, I've done work for a lot of companies, and even on the Hyper-V platform or, or, or VMware, for Hyper-V, for, for my perspective, 
a lot of them, I say, just use the tool out of the box. We know we have Performance Monitor, right? How many of you guys have used Performance Monitor before, right? Always in around back from the days of Windows, right? So it has always been around. And that's a free tool. Can we use it? Is it useful? Of course it's useful. It's just that we have to pick the right measurement to, to kind of look at it, right? So these are some of the questions that our customers continuously ask. Which CPU resources are causing performance issues? How do we tell if it's a processor issue that is causing my application to be slow? Right? I think all of us were in that situation before that users call us up, right? And users call us up and says, um, something's wrong. The application is slow. Do they tell us anything else? Not really, right? How we wish the users, when they call us up and report a problem, they says, I think the application is slow. Um, you might want to look at server number three on rack number four. Um, I think that one has a, a problem on the CPU utilization on core number five. That would be so amazing, right? Unfortunately, that doesn't happen. So when users complain to us that an application is slow, it is really up to us to go and find out where the problem is, right? How much are we wasting on storage? Whenever we embarked on virtualization, then came the story about uh, storage. Right? Um, I'm not sure if you guys uh, attended Martin's session. So he was talking about network and storage monitoring. Right? So how do we actually know that we are fully utilizing or optimally utilizing storage? Uh, can we identify memory issues? Um, do we have enough RAM? Do we have enough? Uh, uh, are we using Are we using too much I/O on the disk right, to compensate for our memory? Is this throughput problems creating VM problems? At the end of the day. I have, we have a lot of customers who love virtualization because we all know virtualization well, gives us flexibility, right? Virtualization allows us to create more VMs than we ever could. We were running physical. But then, how do we know that we are optimally using it? Right? Um, I learned a new, uh, something new here in Madrid. So this is the first time I'm here in Madrid. And there's a, a way that I, I don't know, bartenders pour drinks in Madrid, which I learned, right? So we, we, we order a vodka, we order a vodka, uh, orange or a, or, or a Bacardi Coca-Cola. So they bring an empty glass and a Coca-Cola, and they bring the whole bottle with them. Did you guys uh, experience that? Yeah? And then they start pouring, and they don't stop. <laughs> so if you don't monitor what they're doing, you'll have like 97% vodka and 3% Coca-Cola. Which is the right amount in Russia. That's correct. <laughs> right? So monitoring is pretty important, right? So whatever you do, monitoring is important. Okay? So what do we actually monitor? Four different areas. Generally, we have availability, configuration, performance, capacity. I think we all generally agree on that. Um, availability, normally we talk about very general stuff. I just need to know if my server is up and running. Right? That is basic. I just need to know that it's running. Right? So status monitoring is important. Now, um, if we are running virtualization in a cluster, then we want to know that the cluster is actually um, working. Right? Migration issues. If we're doing um, live migration of vMotion, we want to know that it managed to migrate successfully. Connectivity and also any hardware-relating issues with regards to like power supply, fan temperatures, redundant uh, power supplies uh, failing, and so on. Right? Now, in our session, we're, we're going to focus primarily on performance. Because right? some of this stuff, um, it, there's a lot of uh, already available tools out there. And even though the management packs in, uh, in SCOM, the one that's provided by Microsoft, already gives you that kind of information. Okay? Um, about configuration, how many of you have used the best practice analyzers, BPAs? Okay. Have you used the one in 2012? Right? So in case you did not know, best practice analyzer for Windows Server 2012 is built into the operating system now. It's not a separate download that you have to download and install. Right? So it's in there. It's part of the console. So all you have to do is just turn it on, and you have BPA running. System Center Advisor. Now, this is a really interesting topic. How many of you have used System Center Advisor before? Good. What do you think about it? Good? Right? Yeah? 
What do you use it for, if, if I may ask? Comparing the best practices? Right? What about you, sir? General troubleshooting, right? So if, if you have never used System Center Advisor before, I urge you to take a look. System Center Advisor is a cloud-based service uh, provided by Microsoft, and it's free. It's not something you pay for. And it's basically a console. You will, you will be asked to install an agent on it. And on a daily basis, it uploads configuration of your servers up to the System Center Advisor um, database, right? So when it's up on the SCA database, it starts kind of doing an uh, analysis of your configurations. So they have um, best practice advice for like SQL. They have best practice for uh, advice for Windows Server. And it will tell you back things like, oh, based on your configuration, you might need this patch, for example. You might need this KB article. So it's, it's something pretty, um, pretty useful to, 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 to check out. And it's cloud-based anyway. Okay? And for those of you who've used uh, System Center Virtual Machine Manager, uh, you know that Virtual Machine Manager uh, manages both Hyper-V and also VMware. Right? So from a central management of configurations of both Hyper-V and VMware, that is basically an option that you can use. OK, now let's get to the good stuff. So in our session, I wanted to focus a lot about performance. And I will tell you the reason why, especially within System Center Operations Manager. Now, there's a lot of performance counters that you can use. So we all know that when we want to measure performance, one of the areas that we can tap on is the performance counters on Windows, right? So there's, I, I, if you pull up Performance Monitor and you click Add on an activity, you can see a, low, a, a huge list of objects and instances that you can add in. Right? So I wanted to go down to basics and what are the, some of the stuff within performance counters that you can use for Hyper-V. Now let's start with the processor first. Okay. So how many of, you know, back when uh, we were managing physical servers, in a way, from a perspective of monitoring, life was actually a lot easier. Right? Why? Like CPU. What did, we, what did you guys use to monitor CPU in the past, I mean, back in physical days? SCOM as well? Well, you're a big fan of SCOM, man. Right? Now, I use... <laughs> I use this. Okay. I'm going to hit on show. How many of you did this before? Right? Task Manager. Didn't we used to love Task Manager? Easy, right? Right click, Task Manager. Look at it. What does CPU tell me for my. So I'm, I, this is my Hyper V server. I'm running a Hyper V cluster, two node cluster, simple one. It tells me that my utilization is at 1%. Awesome, right? Means I have a lot of juice. How many VMs am I running? On this server, I'm actually running about nine VMs, about 10 VMs. I think there's one more at the bottom. 10 virtual machines, 10 servers, and my CPU utilization is at 1%. How many of you believe that? I must not be doing much, right? Right? Now, what, what is the reason um, this is in inaccurate? Okay. So from a Hyper-V perspective, now just in case uh, some of you are not aware of this. So the minute you install Windows Server 2008 R2 or 2012, and you enable Hyper-V, right? what actually happens? The minute you enable Hyper-V, it takes your, the first original OS, packages it up, lifts it up, then puts the hypervisor at the bottom. You can see the blue layer at the bottom. And then puts the operating system back down. So your, the original operating system that you install is actually now like a VM. So that is called the parent partition. So when you hit right-click Task Manager, the 1% CPU that we, we saw earlier, what was that measuring? 
only the parent partition. It doesn't tell you every other virtual machine that is running on that uh, box. Okay? So, so finding the appropriate counter is important. The counter that the appropriate counter to use is under the Hyper-V hypervisor logical processor. And the instance is percentage total runtime. Okay? So if I'm gonna just quickly show that to you. So I pulled up a performance monitor here just to show you. So as you can see, that's our percentage processor time. So you wanna, add, if you're using performance monitor and not, you don't want any fancy tools, this is fine. All you gotta do is make sure that you get the right counter which is the Hyper-V, oops, I just missed it. Hyper-V, Hypervisor Logical Processor, right, and you can choose the object of percentage uh, total runtime, okay? So you have an option now to basically look at it by course or look at it uh, from a total value. And now I have that running here, and as you can see, the green line shows what actually is my physical uh, CPU using. Okay? So that's very basic, right? So if you wanna if you wanna make sure that your CPU is um, performing well, make sure that that green line that you see there is way below 60%. Right? Um, I would even say 50%. So anything above 60%, it's it's then it starts uh, um, causing some concern. Obviously, if that green line you see goes up to 90%, that's really, really a cause of concern, right? Means there's a lot of stuff running and your CPU is uh, being maxed out, okay? All right? Okay, now, so if you do that and then you find that you have like, you're running CPU at about 70%, okay? You wanna know then which virtual machine is contributing to that load, right? So step number two that we do for customers is then we say, okay, now your CPU utilization is very high, let's do some reorganizing of your virtual machines. And that's what you wanna do, right? So then we let, take a look at how much is each and every virtual machine contributing. The counter that I would use is the hypervisor virtual processor. That's the counter. And the instance is percentage guest runtime. Okay, so percentage guest runtime, I think I have it here as well. All right, so I have that. So when you choose percentage guest runtime, you are allowed to choose either the total for a virtual machine or each every virtual processor of that virtual machine. Okay, so for this particular instance, for example, I'm just gonna remove that. This is one of my virtual machines. Okay, on one of the servers. And all I gotta do is just check. Right? And you can see that from a guest perspective, this virtual machine is um, is running pretty okay. Right? It's peaking, right? But it's not you know, flatlining at about 70 to 80 percent. Okay? So you want to go through the virtual machines and look at which is the biggest contributing factor, take that virtual machine and then reorganize it, maybe put it in another Hyper-V server to rebalance out that, that processor. Uh, that process utilization. Okay. Right. So that's CPU. Now let's take a look at memory. So how do we know if memory is performing well? Two counters that is very important for us. One is obviously free memory. So this is pretty straightforward. Uh, we just want. We just need to know whether there's enough memory or not. This memory, the, this counter is the one that you would use from a physical counter perspective. So the counter is memory, and the instance is available megabytes. Right? So generally, um, if you have obviously 50% free memory, that's good. Anything below 10%, that's a cause of concern. Right? So that means that you have very, very little space for buffers. So make sure that uh, you have, I would go around 60 to 70% as a good uh, benchmark. Okay. Now, 
The second counter that I would use is memory pages per second. Everyone knows paging, right? So paging happens when there's not enough memory in memory, and then it starts using disk. Right? So the minute you use disk to store your cache, right, it goes in and out, in and out, in and out very, very frequently, and the I/O on your disk will affect performance of your virtual machines. So we want to make sure that memory pages per second is less than 500 pages per second. Okay? This is healthy. Okay? Anything more than 1,000, this is where you would decide that you would need more or a faster, uh, faster memory right? or more memory. Okay? This is one good justification how you would need to justify adding more RAM to your virtualization service okay? when you have too much paging uh, occurring. Okay, what about network? The first thing I would do is do a ping. All right? I'm not sure about you guys, but uh, I run across, uh, run across a lot of uh, IT guys back in Southeast Asia. And for some reason, they tell me, ping? Ping's not cool. Can you tell me something else? All right? Why is ping not cool? Ping is probably one of the fastest and uh, you know, most uh, efficient way to test connectivity, right? Yeah, that's true, right? But if you want to do quick connectivity tests, ping is something easy, right? Path ping, if, you, if you've heard of path ping, path ping is a way that you can actually send 100 ping packets and find out how many packets come back. Right? That is a way to test uh, packet loss, right? Or connectivity, intermittent connectivity. Okay? Um, file transfer speeds, Right? So some of us just do a copy. Right? On a 100 megabyte network, um, a 100 meg file, uh, sorry, a gig file would probably take about 15 seconds. Right? So you gauge it uh, in that sense. Okay? Now from a performance perspective, I would use the network interface counter. And what I want to look at is the bytes total per second. Right? So I want to know how much of bytes is running through that through my network adapter. Okay? And what I would do is I'll take that value, bytes total per second, right? divide it by the total, uh, what my network uh, interface is utilizing. So if it's a gigabit network card, I will divide it by the gigabit network card. Right? Then times that number with 100 to get percentage. Okay, Quite clear there? So once I got the percentage amount, if it's less than 40%, we're all good. It means we are not suffering from congestion. Okay? So if you take that amount that you get from bytes total per second, again, uh, divide it by your network uh, card, and times it by 100, if that value is above 65, then you are suffering from some network congestion on that network uh, interface. So the decisions that you can take is, Maybe if, if you're running a couple of different network interfaces on the server, right? Can't try to split the load across uh, different network network uh, network interfaces. Okay. Some of us do. Uh, if you're familiar, familiar network teaming, right? So if you are running network teaming, remember remember that network teaming is not um, doubling up your bandwidth, but it provides some form of load balancing. So that. Helps in a little, um, helps a little bit. Okay, network interface also has a counter called output queue length. Right, this is you, for you to determine whether or not there's congestion in the queue. Healthy networks always remain at zero. So if you have this performance counter up on the screen, make sure that it's always at zero. It's it's logical, right? All of us don't like the queue, right? How many of you guys bought the Surface online? All right? How many of you are going to sell it tomorrow? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, it was nice that we could buy the Surfaces online, right? So we don't have to queue. We were in New Orleans, and we had to queue what two and a half hours. That was a long queue. It was a horribly long queue. So two and a half hours uh, to get our Surfaces. 
right? So it's, I think it's great that in uh, Europe they, they decided uh, not to do that. So we, we want to make sure that Q is always zero, OK? OK, quick tip, two tips that I see very common in uh, our customer environments. Number one, if you're using network interfaces with dynamic, um, you, know, you know if you have the 100 slash gigabit slash 10 gig network interfaces, right? So it's, it is supposed to dynamically determine how, what is the speed of your network and then set it accordingly. I would normally set it statically. Okay? We have seen in the past where it chooses the wrong setting. So it's supposed to be a gigabit network, it chooses 100. So I would just statically set it at gigabit if I, wanna, if I know I want to set it at gigabit. Uh, I want to make it a gigabit. Second one is MTU. So MTU stands for maximum transmission unit, right? We want to make sure that if you change MTU out of the default for one of the network interfaces, make sure that MTU settings are equal across all the different connection or communication points. Okay? MTU settings different, MTU settings will affect performance because it has to do some recalculation. Okay? Straightforward. Now, um, when it comes to logical disk or, or capacity, these are some of the counters I would use. For logical disk, it's very simple. We just, from a performance standpoint, we want to know what is the read speed and what is the write speed. Okay? So as long as the read speed or write speeds are roughly about 15 milliseconds to 20 milliseconds, this means our disks are performing well. If it goes above 26 milliseconds, it means that we're taking a long time to write or read data inside, you might want to think about, or oh, this will justify you to add more high-performing capacity disks, right? So if you're using a 10,000 RPM, um, normally for virtualization, we always recommend 15,000, but this will give you that justification, okay? AV, so general practice for virtualization is antivirus that we have installed. We normally set it to exclude scanning of the folders which contains our virtual disk the VHDs, okay? Um, just to share with you guys, um, three weeks ago at a customer environment, we ran into a little issue. We were doing Windows Server 2012, Hyper-V implementations, and for some reason, the Hyper-V VMs started corrupting. Now, we checked and the antivirus had exclusions of the VHDs. So it was not the problem of exclusion, but somehow the VMs started corrupting for, for no reason. So what we did was that we, I won't say what brand of antivirus, um, um, not now, but um, what we did was we totally disabled the antivirus and then that actually solved the problem. So we actually escalated and that antivirus company is working out a bug fix, so they found it out. But I just wanted to share with you guys that it is a possibility that that could be a, a reason right, for VM corruption. OK, now, so it's nice that I see that you guys are all using System Center Operations Manager. Okay? So for those of you who are unaware, so System Center Operations Manager is part of System Center. And at the current release, it is already able to monitor Hyper-V or has the platform to monitor Hyper-V. Okay? Now, let me go straight into a demo for this. So, my motivation for doing this session and a couple of things that I'm doing with customers is that we all know that the Hyper-V management pack that was provided by Microsoft is basically that, okay? So it's more of an availability and configuration uh, type of management pack. Um, there isn't actually any views or anything on performance monitoring. Right? So, so from a monitoring perspective, bringing that information back to SCOM is important because if I'm having two Hyper-V servers, I'm okay. What if I have 20? I don't want to be turning on performance monitor on all 20 servers, right? So having performance 
monitoring within System Center Operations Manager is really not difficult. Okay? So if you have already authored some of your own um, management packs, there's a couple of ways to do it. Right? You can even do it from the console. Now I'm going to show it to you how to do like just, just some of those things that we mentioned about. And I'm going to tell you, don't do it that way. Okay, and I'll tell you why. So remember we were, talk, we were talking about uh, looking at uh, CPU utilization? So I have built this uh, view here which shows CPU performance and I could choose those uh, my Hyper-V servers. The, the bottom blue line is the percentage processes time, which is the inaccurate one which we don't want to look at. The top blue and the red lines is my two Hyper-V servers. Okay? Now, if you want to build something like that in the console, it's really simple. And I'll show it to you, and I'll tell you, avoid doing this, um, and I'll tell you why. Okay. Now, if you go to your authoring pane, the first thing I would do is I would basically create a um, concentrated group of my Hyper-V servers. Right? So I would actually go to groups and I would create a new group, and I would basically place my Hyper-V servers in that group. Right? So whether it's defining a, a criteria for that or doing it statically, I would definitely define a criteria. So I'll just choose um, the Hyper-V role as my criteria. And I have that actually built in here already. Okay, so I actually have this group created with that uh, two Hyper-V servers. Now, to get performance collection into SCOM, you, what you want to do is you want to create a rule, right? Creating a rule through the console is not difficult, so we would just go right click here, create a new rule, choose performance based collection rule, choose Windows performance, uh, select a management pack to put it in, and if you don't, uh, go ahead and create one. Type in the rule name, so let's say I have that as logical processor, and then I'll go ahead and target my rule. So this is the rule that I have which targets my group that I created earlier. And then I'll go ahead and choose the counter. So based on a reference machine, so I'm just going to choose one of the Hyper-V machines as my reference machine. And remember the performance counters that we were looking at? So I'll just go in and choose Hyper-V logical processor and choose my counter and the instance. So for example, um, instance of total. Right? And you pick the interval frequency that you want to collect data. Okay? So once you get that in, right, and you can just click create and it's done. Right? I'm not going to create this now because I've already done that. Okay? So once you've created that in and I have all that created here, Okay. So I have all these rules that everything in my slide that I talked about, all those measurement rules, I have that built in, and it's collecting all those rules uh, back into SCOM. Then you can create the views. Right? So once it starts collecting those rules, then I will go back to my monitoring pane. Then I'll go ahead and start creating my views. Right? So simple one, I would go new, for example, performance view. I'll say logical processor, right? I'll choose um, the group that I that I created, and I would say collection for a specific rule. Okay, and I'll go and choose that rule that you created earlier. Okay, so once you're done, you click OK, then you will get a diagram like this, and boom, you can basically monitor all your Hyper-V servers in one single console. All right? So, so well, I, I, could, I could have done that in, like, what, three minutes? So it's not, to get, it's not difficult to get all those performance monitoring if you know the specific counters to bring into SCOM. Okay? Now, 
That is what I would call the quick and dirty, for lack of a better term, uh, way to create performance monitors in SCOM. In a production environment, this is the fastest way, but I would actually not do it this way. The reason is because there's a lot of GUID information that will be fixed to the management pack, and if you ever upgrade your uh, environment or you want to rebuild environments, you won't be able to reuse this stuff. So I would look at like the Visual Studio uh, authoring tools right, uh, to create these management packs in the background. But this is a good way for you to just like, you know, uh, kind of model what you want to build, right? some of the views, and then take that framework, go to the Visual Studio authoring tool, and then remap that whole thing into a management pack. Right? So I've done that in, in that way as well. So um, after this session, uh, next week when I'm back home, I'm, I'll publish this out for, for you guys so you can actually have this management pack that you can also import into your environment. Okay? So it shows all those uh, performance management as well. Okay. And the nice thing about SCOM, uh, if you're already on 2012, you can actually build some of these uh, dashboards. So taking some of those, uh, those counters that we, we, we built in, we can just plug it into a dashboard, right? So this is a, a simple dashboard that I built to show um, memory available for my host, dynamic memory, uh, performance, looking at average pressure. So I think um, Alex is going to talk to you a little bit about uh, like the um, dynamic memory uh, also in VMware. For Hyper-V, we measure it by measuring the counter called average pressure. Okay? So average pressure tells you how much of demand the VM is asking for versus how much you gave it. Right? So if it's above 100, means above 100%, means that it's asking for more than you gave it in terms of dynamic memory. Right? So make sure that it's always below, uh, below 100. As you can see on my bottom right here, dynamic memory performance, I have a lot of VMs there which is asking for more memory than I have been giving it. Okay? So I might want to look at those uh, VMs. All right? Okay. Right. Um, I'm going to come back and wrap up uh, my part of the Hyper-V uh, session in, a, in saying that in the end of the day, it is not just about the Hyper-V platform. Okay? So like this is, uh, this is uh, two towers that uh, we have back in my hometown, Malaysia. And Imagine that one tower is uh, Hyper-V and one tower is VMware. Right? So the foundation is basically the virtualization platform. It is really very important to also monitor everything else. right? So we know that if one of the floors crash, the whole building will crash. If one of the people renting the floor is not happy, that's not going to work as well. So monitoring from application to hardware to platform to operating system, monitoring the entire end-to-end -end stack, that is I would say more important than just monitoring virtualization alone. Okay, right? And I'll, if I, we have time, I'll show you some of this uh, stuff later. Okay. Okay. So I've actually shown you uh, all the demos uh, along the way, and I'm gonna now pass you over to Mr. King. Thank you, Ray, and hello again, everyone. So. I'm going to talk about the vSphere environment and VMware environment. And like I say, I will use our V management pack for VMware to illustrate some of the points I make. But um, I would like you guys just to be informed about the general concepts and some important counters I'll touch on as well. So you can go out there and you know, make an informed choice about the solutions. And there are a great many solutions out there. Every corner you turn, every trade show you go to, there seem to be another dozen startups who will do your cloud management and optimization and monitoring. Uh, so I'm going to talk about some of the options that you have. You could just say, I've already got vCenter. I'll use vCenter for monitoring. It's got some alarms. It's got some performance charts. All my hosts and VMs are already there. So I'll just use VMware's vCenter for monitoring. Um, I would say that's not your best option. Uh, unless you've got like zero budget, then that's what you have to do. Because vCenter is not a monitoring tool, not a monitoring framework. Uh, it's for configuration and administration. 
but it doesn't really scale very well. It's not very customizable in monitoring terms. You've got some alarms, but uh, they're really pretty basic. There's not really granular information there. There's not enough historical data stored for advanced reporting and capacity planning and trending, that kind of thing. Um, it's your admin tool, it's your configuration tool, but it's not a monitoring tool. So a lot of our customers, uh, there's VMware, kind of just say vCenter is the only tool I need. Um, Again, if you've got zero budget, mm. I guess yes. Then you have to use what you have to use, uh, vCenter or maybe Perfmon. But for the, the situation that you have with any decent sized VMware deployment, you're talking about hundreds or even thousands of virtual machines, you really can't configure uh, scalable or useful granular monitoring with just vCenter. It wasn't designed for that, so I wouldn't try to use it for that. Uh, now, you can use an agent in the virtual machine, for example. If you have System Center, you can put a System Center agent in your virtual machine, and uh, most of our customers do, and probably most of Ray's yeah. clients do as well. For sure, put an agent in there, it monitors uh, services, applications, it monitors the virtualized OS, like your Windows server. It does all that very well. Uh, System Center, best of breed for that, probably. But in terms of a, a virtualized environment, that agent has uh, tunnel vision. Agent cannot see outside the virtualized virtual machine, the virtual hardware that it's running on. So it doesn't actually know anything about the physical host, about the real hardware that's there. It doesn't know about the, the vSphere aspects above it, like being in a resource pool or being vMotion. It doesn't know that it's sharing the physical host resources and the storage and the network with all those other machines. So yes, you can monitor apps and services uh, from inside the VM, but uh, it has blinkers on. It has tunnel vision. Don't tell yourself that it's really monitoring the, the virtualization aspects of that. There are some other protocols that your uh, vSphere environment will spit out, if you like. There's some SNMP traps. Uh, there's some <coughs> syslog messages. Uh, and you can buy tools, or you can maybe even build yourself, if you want, something to consume that data. Uh, Again, I'd say those are kind of old school protocols, really. Uh, they also don't scale very well. They're also not very manageable if you want to build a monitoring solution. And it has taken me five years to build a management pack for VMware. So if you do want to build your own. Five years? Yeah. Five Better get started years. now. Better get started really soon. And syslog, for example, is very granular, extremely granular. Uh, we do have some customers that use it. In fact, our management pack has an option to consume syslog. And if you really want a detailed audit trail of security, maybe, of every access to the ESX or ESXi server, you can filter your syslog if you know what you're doing to, to grab that data. But syslog, if you start one virtual machine, syslog will generate about 100 messages concerning all the stuff that's spinning up internally inside the ESX server. Uh, and it can be very cryptic. And basically, it's a huge job of work for you to try and analyze that in terms of what's important, what isn't in a, in a vSphere environment. The best method and the approved method, the best practice method, is to use the VMware Web Service SDK, which is the API into Virtual Center. Uh, this was designed by VMware for this very purpose. It's very scalable. It provides very rich and detailed information. It gives you the whole topology of your hosts, clusters, virtual machines, storage, network. It gives you all the important counters. gives you an event stream of what's going on, all the configuration data. It's all there. You can uh, query Virtual Center. You can also get it direct from even a standalone host. It's just the same API. Uh, Ah, so the question was, which would I recommend, going to vCenter or going to the hosts? Um, vCenter does have more information in terms of things like uh, resource pools and clusters themselves are vCenter artifacts. So if your hosts are in a cluster, by going to vCenter, you'll, you'll get that full topology. If you go direct to all the individual hosts, you can still monitor those hosts and the VMs they're on, but there's no cluster overall sort of view. So I would say vCenter. Although, that's a good point, that does make your vCenter kind of a single point of failure in monitoring terms. Um, actually, there's a great blog post I will happily share somehow with you guys on using our management pack to eliminate that. You can 
go to vCenter, it's easier and it has more information. But if vCenter does fail, our management pack can fail over to using direct host connections instead uh, until you get vCenter back up and running. So your, your monitoring continues in that situation. But overall, in general, yes, I'd say use vCenter. You only have to maintain one connection, one set of credentials. You get all the information. And it does scale very well. Uh, however, it's a little bit more tricky for you guys if you want to build something homemade. So you do need to learn the API. It's a SOAP API. Uh, you can use uh, some PowerShell commandlets to extract information as well. But it does make it a little bit more work maybe for you guys to try and develop that internally. So having decided you want to use the vCenter SDK, the API, which you'll find that pretty much every tool out there in the market does. So then you have to choose a tool. Uh, I would say System Center Operations Manager is a very good choice. And I don't work for Microsoft, so I've not got that much investment in saying that. But the reason I say that is it's already best of breed for your applications, and it's all about the app, right? It's all about the apps that run your business that, that may or may not be virtualized, but System Center for applications and the, the Windows OS itself for SQL, for Exchange, for all of that critical stuff. Those management packs are included once you've deployed System Center and SCOM. Uh, and Microsoft knows those apps and knows those services because it, it wrote most of them. And the value, I think, in our management pack, for example, is in bringing the vSphere information to what you already have in System Center, to integrating that all together, to letting you see apps and OS that you already have, and then understanding how that maps to your, your virtualized topology, to the virtual machines, the vSphere stuff like clusters, resource pools, virtual applications, and the physical host hardware, your storage, your networking, and so on. You have to have that end-to-end -end picture. As Ray was saying, the end user calls up, and they're talking about their app. They're not going to tell you. Yeah. They don't know it's virtualized. They're not going to tell you which host to check. If you have everything in that single pane of glass that we all reach for, then you have the information to start troubleshooting. A lot of users don't really care whether it's virtualized or not, right? They so just want it to work, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So some of the key concepts that I said I'd hit on, and I, like I say, if you go to choose whatever solution you want to monitor this new virtualization area that you have in your company, there's a few points I'd want to hit on. Uh, first, you need a map. A map? Google need map? <laughs> Bing maps, of Bing course. Map. I'm yes. sorry. I'm sorry. You need to understand uh, the relationships and dependencies, like I just said, between application is running in this OS, is running on that virtual machine, is in that host, is in that cluster, is using this storage and this network. You need to track those relationships and dependencies, especially because they can all move around. Those VMs can move from host to host. They can move from data store to data store. You can no longer really go into the data center, walk up to server three in RAG4, and say, well, there's the app. The problem must be here because it's that very fluid, dynamic, virtualized environment, one of the great advantages, but also one of the challenges, because you need to be able to map and join all that stuff up. You need visualization, really, to do that. To have that map, you need to have a good picture of what's going on. You need dashboards. You need reports that can analyze that fast-changing, dynamic environment and present it to you in a, a quick and useful way. Uh, you don't want to be wading through spreadsheets and that kind of thing or really dense views. Get something that, if you evaluate some of the many tools in the marketplace, get something that feels intuitive to you and takes you to the root cause of the, of the problem. There can be such a thing as too much information as well as not enough. Now, everybody has to share. Sharing is caring. Sharing is caring. <laughs> everybody has to play nice. And as I already mentioned, you have to understand that this virtualized environment, all those apps, therefore all those virtual machines, they're all sharing those resources. And there are some key metrics that I'll tell you in a second that tell you how that sharing is performing and tell you how to understand uh, what's being impacted by that resource sharing. Again, it, it's one of the great advantages of virtualization. It's how it works. It's how you can deploy a lot more virtual machines than you, you really have the physical resources for because of all that background sharing, but you've got to understand how that's working or not working. Look to the future. We all need to be proactive. We 
need tools that will forecast and trend and do modeling. Again, in your virtualized environment, it's probably growing very fast. Uh, I don't think I know anyone whose virtual environment is shrinking. And you need to be able to plan that. Again, because of all the shared resources, of all the interactions that are going on, you need tools that help you plan for the next project. You need to know how many more virtual machines will fit on this cluster. You need to know when will my cluster run out of resources. At the current rate, I am throwing new VMs on there because it's, it's very easy to deploy VMs. A couple of clicks these days. Again, that agility is one of the great advantages of virtualization. But you need to be able to look to the future and, and understand the, the impact of all of this growth and change that's going on. And finally, knowledge. Again, go to the market. Uh, there's lots of tools out there. But what you need is one that has some built-in knowledge, some assistance, uh, some built-in analysis, a knowledge base that's going to help you solve uh, the problems that it lights up. Because most of the end users are not going to be VMware experts. In fact, if you need a team of VMware experts to watch the monitoring tool that you've got, that's kind of a waste of money. It's a pretty expensive job for your top VMware experts to be doing is watching a monitoring console. You it's need monitor. something... It's a monitor for the monitoring tool. Yeah. You need something that's maybe going to elevate that monitoring team, your network operations center, those frontline guys who are there 24-7, weekends as well. If it pops up with a VMware problem, you need help and guidance for them. You need some analysis. You need to point them in the right direction. So at least if it is 2 a.m. on a Sunday, they call the right team, storage team, network team, vSphere team, whoever. You want to call the right guy when it's the middle of the night. So make sure the tool that you use has that kind of uh, guidance built in. I've got a few screenshots before we dive into some deeper metrics. Uh, and this is from our VM management pack for VMware. Just to pull up those uh, points I just made, like a map. We build these topology diagrams automatically. This one shows the virtual center, the data center you've defined there, the actual storage, all the individual LUNs uh, could be clustered as well. And the virtual machines that run there, you can drill further down right into the applications. That's about understanding, like I say, that, that map, those dependencies. What runs where? If you have a problem on one of those data stores, which VMs are actually using it? Which apps are running there? Visualization. Now, again, this is one of our heat map reports. And the, the two panes there actually show the same information. But personally, I designed this as a heat map because I think the left one is a lot easier to read. This is a table of data, and we've all got enough of those in our life. It's given there as a summary. But the map on the left, the box is the whole data store. The white space is free space. Each VM is sized according to its size. And it's colored according to whether it's tripped the growth threshold. It's one of the report parameters. So I can immediately see that it's over half full. There's a few VMs, a couple of little ones, a few big ones, but one of them's growing like crazy. And you can click and drill down into that hot spot. Um, and that's what I mean by visualization, guiding you to the, the parts you should be interested in, because that data store could have several hundred VMs on it. You imagine the table would be not so easy to read. But the heat map always is you can always see the hot spots and find what you need. This is uh, one of our dashboards. Uh, and again, uh, memory pressure, understanding how that resource sharing is working in your vSphere environment. If your host has high memory pressure, and I'll be discussing that metric in detail right now, but knowing which VMs are on that host and seeing all the information in one place, the top left one is the, the memory pressure on the host. The uh, top right pane is all the alerts for that host and the VMs on that host. So one place for you to find the the in-context data, and maybe do some uh, analysis to get to the problem. And then we can graph the actual memory consumed by those VMs, just the VMs on that host. And you can see historically what's been going on there, and what recent events maybe have kicked up some metric spike that's causing the problem. Uh, so understanding how that sharing is working and, and focusing your understanding as well on the problem area. 
and capacity planning. Uh, again, many tools out there and many different ways to do this. Uh, but I think it's a critical feature that you should definitely have whatever tool you choose. Uh, these are our capacity planning reports uh, built into SCOM using the, the reporting data warehouse in SCOM uh, and pulling out the, the key metrics and then calculating a trend for that and telling you when and if you're going to hit the thresholds defined in the report. And as I say, when you've built your, your cluster, your VMware cluster, and everyone is happily provisioning and throwing VMs on there, this is how you know just how much time you have left while your environment is growing before you need to order more hosts, more storage, whatever you need. It's not something you want to find out when you suddenly have a performance issue. You need to know ahead of time uh, before you can get those servers uh, stacked and racked. And the knowledge base, finally. This has always been a key feature of a management pack. I spend a lot of my time updating our knowledge base and make sure whatever tool you choose is not just focused at a, a VMware expert, because you won't always have a VMware expert sitting in front of it. You need to have the guidance, and these uh, links for all the different possible events I've pulled out here, they go to our online knowledge base for there's even more analysis and drill down stuff uh, to help you understand what these events mean. As you can see, those are kind of cryptic events. You can't just throw that at a, a general uh, help desk or server administrator throw him an alert and expect him to understand what it means, what he should do exactly. You've got to have KB guidance analysis assistance built in. So I said we'd dive into some specific metrics. Again, uh, whether you build it yourself uh, or you go to the marketplace to buy it, make sure you're watching these kind of aspects. It's about the resource sharing again. And it's a huge factor because it's something that's really different in the virtualized world. When one app was on one physical server and it had all the resources of that server to itself, you didn't have to think about really the sharing that much. It was uh, maybe processes within that one server were sharing the resources. But now you've got completely separate virtual machines all sharing the resources. CPU pressure is a, a metric we calculate internally in our management pack. And it talks about the number of virtual CPUs are running for every core in your host. Now you can deploy a lot more than you actually have cores because uh, vSphere will schedule all those different virtual CPUs. They'll all get their own little slice of runtime. Uh, and it will manage that for you. But if you have a very high ratio there, like a lot of machines, even a lot of multi-core machines, then the vSphere host itself will spend all of its time trying to manage that scheduling there won't actually be a lot of runtime given to those CPUs. Mm -hmm. That's why if you have a VM that you think is performing badly, you throw another four cores on it, you can actually make it worse because you're impacting the host. It's struggling to, uh, to manage all of those cores, those virtual cores. Uh, the absolute maximum in vSphere is 25 virtual CPUs per host core. Best practice is more like four to eight. Uh, that's one of the metrics. Uh, we have an actual monitor for that in our management pack. It's factored into the capacity planning reports to make sure you don't deploy too many cores on your cluster and so on. Memory pressure, as promised. Another great feature of virtualization is how it can share memory across VMs. Uh, vSphere has TPS, which is transparent page sharing. It means that all those VMs that are loading common pages of memory, like uh, all of your Windows 2012 virtualized servers, We'll load various kernel and so on that are all common between all those VMs. And in the background, unknown to the VM, vSphere will share that. It will just have one of those pages on its physical memory, and all the VMs can reference it because it's read only anyway. That's a great feature. That's how you can give out 200 gigabytes in memory to all your VMs, and you've only got 128 on your server. But again, track that memory pressure. And, and these pressure metrics are before you have a performance problem. There's other metrics I'll talk about in two seconds that actually tell you you've got a performance issue. This is more about tracking your policy and understanding how much pressure you're putting on the host. It hasn't broken yet, but if you just keep piling, keep overcommitting, 
keep oversharing metrics like, uh, like memory and CPU, you can cause issues if those VMs actually start to demand the resources that you've allocated to them. If your memory pressure is very high and your VMs actually sort of run an update, something like that, and start actually saying, well, I need some of this 16 gig of memory. You said I could have it. Then you get uh, ballooning. I'll mention that later. That's ESX trying to reclaim memory back from VMs. And you can even get swapping. And once your host is using its disk swap file, you really will have a performance impact. And disk pressure. Finally, you can over-provision your storage. You can use thin provisioning. It's built into vSphere. Uh, you can get a lot more virtual machines on your storage, on your SAN. Uh, and you can have handed out more memory because the white space inside the VM, the unused space, is not actually committed on your storage backend. Another great feature. Squeeze more VMs on that storage. They all think they have like these big fat disks, but actually, on the back end, it's, the white space is not committed. Again, it's not a performance impact, except for the fact that you have more virtual machines actively using that back-end storage. The fact that it's overcommitted is not a performance issue. But again, if those VMs all install an app, all download a service pack, and start to say, OK, give me some of this disk that I can see, then you can really fill the actual capacity of the back-end storage. And then you really have a problem. If you, re if you fill a vSphere data store, you'll corrupt your VMs. And you better have a backup, because they they'll go down and they'll hard stop and they won't come back up. So more than those were like the proactive sort of uh, planning or policy-based metrics. These are uh, real-world metrics, real-time real, real -time metrics, I mean. Uh, CPU used, keep it under 90%. I guess that's probably not a new idea. But metrics CPU ready and CPU co-stop in a vSphere environment, those are talking about the CPU scheduler and how well it's performing and how stressed it is trying to allocate all those virtual machines and all their cores with actual runtime. And you want to keep those two below 15%. Once they go above 15%, it means the VMs are, are ready to run, but they're, they're waiting. They're waiting for some actual CPU time from the host. And you'll get a performance impact from that. Real-time memory monitoring, again, we'll keep it under 90, maybe even a bit lower, be conservative. The memory balloon. Balloon driver is uh, a feature of vSphere where in the VMware tools that run inside the guest OS, ESX can control that. And if ESX is being asked for memory, it will inflate this balloon. It's a great name for it because that's really what it does. It just grabs some high-priority memory pages blows up a balloon inside the memory of that VM. It doesn't use it, it just takes it, and it gives it back to the host. As far as the, the virtualized OS is concerned, some high priority process asks for memory. So it will do its own swapping and its own memory management. Maybe it will use its own swap file. And so the host gets some more memory to give to another VM. But that can cause high disk I.O. inside your VM. The VM is, is swapping now. It's using its own memory management techniques. Uh, and using its own swap file, probably. So that's why you need to watch ballooning. And that's an explanation of why you think your VM is swapping like crazy. Why is it swapping? Because the host is forcing it to balloon. And finally, if the ballooning that the host is initiating is not enough to give it the memory for all these VMs, the host will start swapping. And that's last resort for the host. Obviously, disk does not perform anything like memory. So once your host is swapping, you've got a problem. Uh, and again, about the mapping, that's why you need a map. That's why you need to know which VMs are running on which host and what like, their key metrics are. Storage space, obviously you need to monitor that. Make sure your data store isn't actually full. Uh, the disk pressure is a factor, and that's how you can be proactive by understanding how overcommitted you are. And those pressure metrics are, again, not visible in vCenter, for example, not all of them. Uh, it's something we calculate ourselves in our collector that feeds SCOM. Uh, so that's a factor in uh, how your storage might suddenly fill up. I've put the minimum as uh, 100 megabytes. By the time you've only got 100 megabytes left in a data store, you seriously, you should be running. You should hit the fire alarm, because uh, it's all about to hard stop. Uh, I'd really say keep more space than that. Keep 
several gigabytes, and it, it's related to how big your data stores are and how thin provisioned they are and so on. But like I say, if you run out of space, your VMs will hard stop. You might corrupt the journaling on the actual data store. You might never recover the entire data store. So be very careful with the free space. Uh, we have a monitor in our MP to track unknown files, garbage files. These are maybe orphaned VMs, orphaned snapshots, uh, ISOs, uh, maybe the administrator's MP3 collection, who knows? But stuff that is not in the virtual center inventory, but it's on the data store. Uh, so again, keep an eye on what's consuming this uh, probably quite expensive storage in your environment. And latency. How many people in their virtualized environment are actually looking at an issue with storage performance? Storage backend performance. I've never seen no hands for that question. Most of our customers have issues on the storage backend because virtualization leans very heavily on the storage. Most people have enough CPU in their hosts, uh, even enough memory, but the, the storage is where the bottlenecks seem to be. There's a metric called kernel latency. Should really be zero within the host. Uh, it's just kind of the queue of uh, commands that are passing through the hypervisor on their way to the storage, and that should really be zero. Anything more than zero, there's some kind of configuration or uh, routing issue there. To the storage back end, then your mileage will vary on this. It depends what kind of super fast multi SSD SAN you've got, or maybe just some iSCSI box. Uh, but try and keep it below 20 milliseconds. Otherwise, you're going to get some uh, knock on performance issues in the VM. Uh, and again, use tools. You should have the tools like heat mapping, um, reports, dashboards that will help you find the hotspots in IO, which VMs are actually overloading the storage, causing latency, again, knocking on to impact all other VMs that are maybe queuing their storage commands. So you really need that map because the VMs that are showing the worst impact might not be the VMs that are causing the problem. That's why you need the mapping. And we talked a lot about performance, but I want to have one slide that says don't forget about the events. There is a wealth of events that come out of the vSphere SDK on all aspects of the virtual environment. Uh, we're looking for several hundred different events from, uh, from vCenter. Uh, and that can tell you a lot, especially when you correlate it with the performance data on availability and status and, and what's going on in your environment. <sighs> okay. I was going to jump into... Show. Sure. Uh, yeah, show. Sure. Yeah. Quickly pull out some of the points that I just illustrated and go for a little drive through one of your options. Yeah. Use the right mouse. Yeah, it'll help if you use the right yeah. mouse and keyboard. <laughs> what a schoolboy this is. <laughs> the System Center Operations Manager 2012 SP1 console. Uh, this, like I said, is where all your applications and all your services, this should hopefully be that single pane of glass that lets you see everything that's going on. And this is one of the diagrams. This is the compute topology. We build this automatically for you. And we discover that uh, vSphere environment. Data centers, clusters, uh, resource pools. This is one physical host expanded. You've got a visibility of that hardware. Uh, we actually get this agentlessly through uh, the SIM model, SIM smash. Um, so agentlessly and also independent of the vendor. Uh, all your enterprise class servers, Dell, HP, Fujitsu, IBM, they all support this method. So we're able to talk directly to the hosts and uh, get all the details on the hardware information. Uh, that's actual temperature sensors and fans and so on. And again, that's part of your map. You need to understand if a power supply fails, that it's on this ESX server, where are these VMs, where are these critical business apps. Uh, storage, connectivity, every HBA. Uh, again, this comes from vCenter, so it doesn't matter the brand of HBA in this case. It could be fiber channel. It could even be iSCSI connection. Those are. Uh, we track maintenance mode in vCenter with this object. Uh, there are the physical NICs on the host. And there are the 
virtual machines. I don't think I've got, uh, no, I don't have any agents installed on these guys. Uh, but if there was an agent inside that VM, as mentioned, best practice probably to understand a deeper view into that agent, we would tie those agents onto our topology as well. So you could drill right down into the database, uh, the website, whatever's running there. There's that storage topology that you saw a screenshot of. And again, it's key to, to understand which apps on which VMs are running on which storage and be able to analyze possible bottlenecks and so on. Here are some of the dashboards. We used Microsoft's uh, new dashboard widgets in Ops Manager 2012. And so we're able to pull out, again, the, the in-context data. I don't think those VMs are powered on on this one. We've got uh, space analysis, traffic analysis, latency analysis, dashboards, so on. And again, the powerful stuff is to be in context, especially when you've got a large environment. You need to be able to jump from an alert to a dashboard, drill down, drill down, get to the root cause. You can drill from these dashboards from cluster to host to VM, then inside the VM. Uh, again, find the hotspots, find the spikes and the critical events in the top right there, and understand what's actually driving the problem that's got this user on the phone yeah. saying the website is slow. I know we're running out of time, but no one's got any other sessions to go to anyway, right? <laughs> yeah, just flights to, to get, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just flights to catch. Yeah. Hopefully flights to catch. <laughs> that kind of real-time uh, performance analysis is also very important. Uh, we have analysis monitors in our MP that will not just flag up uh, like one metric has gone hot. In this case, there's high latency, but we'll also pull out all the related information, the disk uh, devices that are attached, that are exhibiting latency, we'll break it down into read and write. Yeah, you can jump to a dashboard that will show you the VMs that are, uh, have high I.O., which will be causing that, and so on. You have to be able to tie all that stuff together. It's a very dynamic environment. It's very fluid. Things are changing and moving around. You need this kind of, uh, these kind of capabilities to expose that, and quickly as well, because Ray's on the phone and his website is down. Now I'll just show, let's see, one more thing. Uh, the forecasting. We have a pretty rich set of reports, uh, and that, again, is something you should definitely look for in whatever solution you want to choose. Uh, because the other side of the real-time monitoring is the reporting and analysis and optimization that you'll need to do on your environment if you want to keep it running efficiently and you want to plan for the, the future. This is one of those reports that's tracking and trending the compute resources in your cluster. This is one of our reports that actually recommends right-sizing virtual machines. We have both oversized and undersized VMs report. Uh, and again, that's how you track how much memory is being allocated uh, and run more efficiently because of that. Understand what you're demanding of your environment. And you can track CPU as well. Uh, thinking about the number of virtual CPUs per core and the utilization as well. Don't assign more cores than your virtual machine use, uses. We look at all that historical data. We analyze the standard deviation and the peaks. We have a, quite a smart algorithm behind that and tell you if you've given too many virtual CPUs out because that is stressing your ESX scheduler. That means you're running less efficiently and it can be hard otherwise uh, to understand why. Now with that, that was a real quick look. Like I say, please drop into veeam.com. So I'm going to throw you a challenge here, Alan. So uh -oh. um, I'm going to give, I'm going to be giving my Hyper-V management pack for free. Um, <laughs> Whoa. So 
Well, you know, I do have an answer for you. Okay. I do have an answer for you. This is my last slide. And uh, like I say, unfortunately, they tore down our booth, so you can't just pop downstairs and get a demo of this. But please go over to Veeam.com. We have lots of webinars, lots of collateral. Uh, you can get hooked up with your local guys if you want to see a, a full demo, even do a PLC. Uh, we shipped our version 6 this year. It's certified to install on server 2012. Supports System Center 2012 SP1. Certified VMware ready, listed on Microsoft Pinpoint. And to answer your question, and by the way, don't delay because this promo of 10 free sockets uh, ends this quarter, so it's closed tomorrow. But if you hop onto that web page, veeam.com slash freemp, and there's banners on the site as well, you can actually get 10 free sockets, that's sockets of uh, ESX. It's the full product, it's fully featured, and it's got one year support and maintenance as well. It's just like you bought 10 sockets. And you can use that to deploy it in production, it's fully supported. Uh, kick the tires uh, and see if you like it for free. Wow. There you go. And with that, thank you guys. I'll hand it back to Ray. Hey, thanks, Alec. So um, I guess we, we kind of we're running out of time. So uh, we really hope that that session is uh, useful for you guys. We really wanted to dive very, very deep and take a look at real, real metrics that uh, we can use on a day-to-day -day basis. Right? Um, maybe a little bit too deep for some of us, but I think we, we, we feel that, that that's really important uh, when you're actually monitoring the virtualization platforms, right? So make sure that uh, those performance uh, measurements are uh, seen correctly, and then fit them into the tool so you can s look at it from a holistic uh, view, right? Uh, so that's uh, what we have for you. Um, we will still be around for questions if you guys uh, don't need to catch a flight. Um, and thank you. and. Uh, have a good evening. Thank you.